Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games. Today we continue our People's Choice Top 100 Board Games of All Time, covering games number 70 through 61. We've surveyed over 3,300 board game designers, publishers, reviewers, content creators, and influencers, and these are the results we came up with. So without any further ado, let's go straight to the list with the number 70. The People's Choice number 70 board game of all time is... Twilight Struggle and Twilight Struggle is basically a game that encapsulates the entire Cold War from 1945 all the way to 1989. This is a two player only game historical card based almost like war simulation game where players are tactically playing their cards either as historical events that activate special abilities or benefits or they're using them as a currency to pay for different types of actions. Anything from flat out, straight out attacking an opponent or trying to gain influence in particular areas or countries in the world, or maybe uh, planning a coup to secretly and covertly uh, change the momentum and swing the pendulum in your favor. Uh, this game here, as I mentioned, it's a two-player only game. It's very strategic, very thoughtful. Uh, it is published by GMT Games, so the quality of the components and the graphics may not necessarily be up to par. And it is a little bit of an older game. This game was originally designed in 2005, so it's been out there for a while. Now, Twilight Struggle last year did not actually rank at all in the top 100. It did get a good amount of votes, but for whatever reason, this year it got a lot more pushing it all the way as high as number 70. I'd like to give a shout out to all the people on the screen right here who have chosen Twilight Struggle as their favorite board game of all time. As far as the People's Choice goes, it's number 70. The People's Choice number 69 board game of all time is... Raiders of the North Sea, designed by Shem Phillips and published by Garfield Games. And this is the second and most successful of all the games in his original North Sea trilogy. As a matter of fact, it's the highest ranked Shem Phillips game on the entire list. So even the games from the West Kingdom trilogy uh, could not necessarily surpass North Sea and its current popularity. And basically, this is a Norse Viking themed game where players are taking on the role of tribes of Vikings trying to win, win over the favor of their chieftain by raiding different campsites, bringing back the loot, and presenting it as an offering to that chief. Uh, and all the while, they're gaining victory points by doing so. There's other things that players are doing. First of all, they're basically sacrificing their crew members to the Valkyrie in order to send them to Valhalla and score victory points on the Valkyrie track. There's also the armor track that makes you uh, eligible to raid certain areas that are a little bit harder to raid because you have a to have, you have to have a certain threshold of armor in order to even raid these locations. And also, it gives you victory points at the end of the game if you raise your armor level to a certain height. Uh, this game has a real cool, neat worker placement mechanism where you place down one meeple and then pick up another meeple all in the same turn, and both of those meeples will trigger different actions. Now, Raiders of the North Sea was ranked as high as number 44 last year, so it has dropped down about 25 spots. Uh, but it's still holding very strong. I'd like to give a shout out to the people here on the screen who have chosen Raiders of the North Sea as their number one game of all time. As far as the People's Choice goes, it's number 69. The People's Choice number 68 board game of all time is War of the Ring, another classic game that has been around for a very long time, especially if we count the first edition. And basically, this is another two-player only game where one player takes on the side of the Fellowship, leading Frodo and Samwise along with the other members of the Fellowship, and the other player takes on the role of the Shadows or the Forces of Sauron. And basically, it's a very asymmetric game where not only do the two sides have different endgame game goals but mechanically speaking there's some differences because even though most of the actions throughout the game are determined by the rolling of dice one side has totally different dice than the other side and as a matter of fact they have totally different amount of numbers of dice they roll a different uh, quantity of dice on each turn and all of these dice trigger different particular actions but for the most part the forces of Sauron are trying to conquer as many settlements as possible and at the same time they're trying to locate the uh, location they're trying to identify the location of the hidden fellowship because the fellowship spends most of the game hidden there's a little bit of hidden movement taking place in 
in this game. While the Fellowship is also trying to hold back the forces of Sauron from controlling and conquering these different settlements. And also, they're trying to move secretly through the path, covertly, as I mentioned, hidden movement, until they make it to Mount Doom in order to uh, destroy the One Ring for their victory condition. Again, very asymmetric, thematic game. If you like uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's universe, if you like The Lord of the Rings, this is a game you have to look into. Uh, this game here, War of the Ring, last year was ranked number 54, so it's dropped down 13 spots or 14 spots, not too bad. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to the people on the screen right here who have chosen War of the Ring as their number one game of all time. As far as the People's Choice goes, it's number 68. The People's Choice number 67 board game of all time is Calico, and Calico is a cat theme game and if you want your games to be successful make sure you include a cat theme because people absolutely adore these kind of themed games uh calico here is a tile laying game where players are competing to sew the coziest quilt as they collect and place patches of different colors and patterns now each quilt has a particular pattern that must be followed and players are trying to create color and pattern combinations that are not only aesthetically pleasing, but also are able to attract the cuddliest cats. Now, Calico did not rank on the list last year, and it's no surprise because it only came out two years ago. And as I mentioned previous in previous videos, it's hard for a game to climb up so high on the ranks when it's still fresh uh, in the minds and in the hearts of their of the audience. However, this year it did make it onto the list and it made it as high as number 67. I'd like to point out the people on the screen here who have chosen Calico as their favorite board game of all time. As far as the people's choice goes, it's number 67. The People's Choice number 66 board game of all time is Journeys in Middle Earth. And this is another Lord of the Rings themed game right here in the same section of 10. And I believe this is the highest uh, Lord of the Ring themed game on the entire list. The Living Card game got a good amount of votes. And as I mentioned earlier, War of the Ring was high enough to rank number 68. But Journeys in Middle Earth just barely beats out War of the Ring as the people's favorite J.R.R. Tolkien game. And basically, this is a dungeon crawl adventure style game where players are taking on the role of the heroes all in the efforts of completing different quests that the game provides. This is an app-driven game where players will be using the app in order to manage lots of the upkeep as far as the quests and the challenges are concerned. Lots of people have compared it to Mansions of Madness in that regard and as far as the feel of the game is concerned. Now, Journeys of Middle-Earth was ranked number 67 last year and this year it's climbed up exactly one spot as high as number 66. So talk about holding steady it's pretty much uh secured locking down this uh area in the top 100 list i'd like to point out the people here on the screen who have chosen journeys in middle earth as their number one board game of all time as far as the people's choice goes it's number 66 the people's choice number 65 board game of all time is parks and parks here was ranked number 61 last year so talk about another game that's really holding strong it's only dropped down four spots and basically parts is an ode to the national parks of the United States of America. Players take on the role of two hikers as they trek through the different trails across four seasons of the year. These hikers are taking actions and collecting memories of the places that their hikers visit. Now, collecting these memories in sets will allow players to trade them in to visit a national park at the end of each hike. Each trail represents one season of the year, and each season, the trails will change and grow steadily longer. Resources can be tough to come by, especially when someone is at the place that you're trying to reach. I'd like to give a shout out to the people on the screen here who have chosen parks as their number one board game of all time. As far as the People's Choice goes, it's number 65. The People's Choice number 64 board game of all time is... Underwater Cities, designed by Vladimir Suchi. And this game here was ranked number 60 last year, so it also has only dropped four spots. It's in the same exact uh, position as Parks that dropped four spots over the course of one year. So I guess that's the overall theme of this set of 10. This middle section of the list are games that are holding on strong. They're not climbing up very much, but they're also not dipping down too low. They're holding strong in the eyes of the audience. Now, Underwater Cities here is a game about players who are establishing the best and most livable underwater areas due to the overpopulation of planet Earth. Players are engaging in some card drafting and card placement. There are three colored cards. 
Not only are the cards color coded, but the edges of the board are color coded. So where you place cards and the uh, ability to match or combine colors is very crucial. Ideally, players want to place cards in the slot that matches the color of that card. Players are trying to gain raw materials to build and upgrade city domes, tunnels, and production buildings, farms, destination devices, and laboratories in their personal underwater area. I'd like to give a shout out to the people here on the screen who have chosen Underwater Cities as their number one board game of all time. As far as the People's Choice goes, it's number 64. People's Choice number 63 board game of all time is Sulkin, the Mayan Calendar. And this game here has been out for over 10 years at this point, and it's still a very highly popular game. Last year, this game ranked at number 57, dropped down six spots again, uh, keeping in the theme of this set of 10, where the games are not dropping down too low. And Zulkin, as the box and the title indicate, is a Mayan-themed game that revolves around the calendar. And the interesting gimmick... The main mechanism behind this all is the rotation of several uh, interrelated uh, wheels here, or gears, if you will. And these gears, as they rotate, also rotate all the interconnected gears, and they move the workers along the track in order to activate different types of actions. On a player's turn, they could either place one or more of their workers on the lowest visible spot of the gears, or they can pick up one or more workers. Now, when they pick up those workers, they perform certain actions depending on the position of the worker. Now, actions located later on on the gears are more valuable and more beneficial, but at the same time, players cannot skip a turn. Every turn, they either have to put down a worker, or if they don't have any workers to put down, they're obligated to pick it up. So timing and uh, optimizing your strategy is key in this game. I like to point out the people here on the screen who have chosen Sokin, the Mayan calendar, as their number one board game of all time. As far as the People's Choice goes, it's number 63. The People's Choice number 62 board game of all time is Aeon's End. And Aeon's End is a fantasy-themed deck-building game where players cooperatively take on the role of mages trying to fight different nemeses who are attacking their homeland of Gravehold. And this game here, the interesting part of the deck building here, is the fact that you never shuffle your deck. So the way you discard cards after you use them, after you spend them, the way and the order in which you discard them is very crucial because when you are done, when you run through your deck, you are simply going to flip over your uh, discard pile and that's going to be your deck for the next uh, couple of turns or the next couple of rounds. So how you manage that is crucial. Players are trying to uh, use their spell cards in particular in order to attack the nemeses before the nemeses are able to knock them out or lower the health of Gravehold to zero. Now, Aeon's End was actually ranked number 64 last year, so it's climbed up two spots. Very impressive. I'm sure it's due to all the content. There's so many expansions, small box and big box standalone expansions that have come out of this game. Not to mention Aeon's End Legacy and the sequel to Aeon's End Legacy that's coming out soon. So all of these products keep the game in the forefront of the audience's mind. I like to point out the people here on the screen who have chosen Aeon's End as their number one board game of all time. As far as the People's Choice is concerned, it's number 62. The People's Choice number 61 board game of all time. And the last one for today's list is Cartographers. And Cartographers is actually new to the list. It was not ranked last year. Although I do remember it getting a decent amount of votes. And the game is still relatively new. It came out about two and a half years ago. But I think it's growing in its popularity due to its relationship uh, with role player and role players growing popularity because this game basically takes place in the role player universe. And this game here, players are taking on the role of cartographers in the service of Queen Gimnax. They are sent out to map a particular territory in order to claim it for the kingdom of Nalos. Now, there are some enemies that you have to account for in this game referred to as the Draggle. And players must draw their lines, literally draw with a pen and pencil or pencil, draw their lines carefully in order to reduce the influence of the draggle. If a player is able to reclaim the greatest share of the queen's desired lands, they will be declared the greatest cartographer in all of the kingdom. 
therefore the winner of the game. I'd like to point out the people on the screen here who have chosen cartographers as their absolute favorite board game of all time. As far as the people's choice goes, it's number 61. And that's it for today's list, folks. Thank you so much for joining us here with Harry at Board Games. Please comment down below and tell me what you think about this particular set of 10. Were any of these games highly ranked on your individual list? Also, if you're interested in catching my personal top 10 board games of all time, click on the video on the link right here on the screen and you can catch that video as well. Don't miss us next time as we'll be covering games number 60 through 51 for the people. That's it for today's video. Thank you for joining us here. This is Harry saying take care everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.